Let's talk more about limited run games because for whatever reason they're the videos that do the best on my channel. Specifically selling your limited run games or just your games in general. So recently I've been slimming down my game collection. I've been selling off, I sold off my entire PlayStation 3 library and a few of my limited run games as well as some other random titles here and there to just take about 50 titles out of my library to put some money back in my pocket. And I'm not saying I sold all my limited run games, but that's just been some of them that I chose to sell. It was basically to sweeten the deal, put some extra value in there for it to make the deal go through kind of thing. And these were mostly games I felt like I didn't need to hold on to, whether they just didn't pique my interest anymore, or I just never opened, never got around to it, and I wasn't gonna get around to it. These are all games that I've owned for a good chunk of time now, at least, I don't know, all of them have been somewhere from 10 months to two years old at this point that I've had them. And I feel like we need to address this part of video game collecting. There's gonna be a time where you feel like you may need to sell part of your collection or just let it go because it's either taking up too much space or you need the money or you're looking for a new game to buy and you need to just liquidate some, some games. It, it happens, it happens to people who are building large collections or even medium-sized collections. So like I said, I took about 50 games out of my collection, I sold them and helped pay for my OLED switch and a trip that we went on for vacation. We went over to Ireland and I picked up more games there obviously, but I, I just wanted to liquidate some stuff out of my basement and I wanted to get some cash for that trip. And in my other limited run videos, I've been accused of somebody who's just cares about the money side of video games. Like I don't care about playing them or care about collecting them. And that's just not the case. I feel like you have to care. You have to care about the monetary side because that's how you build a collection on a budget. You can't just go out and pay full price for every single game or you know, you're not gonna get anywhere. Sometimes you have to buy something knowing that in the future you're gonna have to let it go in order to move on. And what exactly somebody said is, seems like the guy who's into buying games for their monetary value and rarity status as opposed to the core reason as some of these companies like Limited Run exist to provide physical releases for games that would otherwise have only been available digitally. And I disagree on two parts there. One, I am not that kind of person. I don't just care about the rarity, I care about the games I actually want to play. It's just sometimes I get caught up in that FOMO and I feel like I need to buy that limited run release. Or there's actually been a case where I want a golf story. Celeste was also there because it was the, if you don't know, they do a sale every January. And I was just like, well, it's there. I'm gonna grab it. I'm probably never gonna play it, but I'm gonna grab it because I know it's gonna be valuable. So I, I, I did both essentially. I got a game because it was valuable and I got a game because it was actually one that I wanted to play. And the other issue I have with that comment is Limited Run doesn't just exist to make these games physical. They don't just exist to bring a game from physical to digital because otherwise I wouldn't get one. That's just not the case anymore. There are lots of companies that are doing this. So basically Limited Run is, is a cash grab now at this point. What they were doing is they were keeping the PlayStation Vita alive and they were putting out physical releases for Vita and some PlayStation 4 as well, and they were keeping that system going. Yes, that one I would agree. These games were not gonna get a physical release otherwise, but at this point, with the Switch being as big as it is, it, it's, it's a cash grab now. This isn't just about giving a game a release that wouldn't get one otherwise. And so when it comes to selling limited run games, the only time it ever bothers me are the people who buy it and then instantly post it online. They don't even have it in hand, they literally just have a confirmation email and they're like, I'm gonna post this on eBay because I wanna make a profit right now. Those are the only people I have an issue with because you really don't care about the video game industry, you care about flipping to make a profit. And I don't know everybody's background, I don't know if somebody's hurting for money and so this is what they have to do to like make ends meet for now, I don't know. But those are the people who bug me because you don't even have it in hand. If you get a limited run game, you hold on to it for a year and then decide, hey, you know what, increased in value, now I wanna sell it because there's these, you know, this bill I have, these other games I wanna play, or it's just not getting used. I don't have a problem with that. You turn a profit a year later, but you're not just going out there with the sole intent of 
reselling this game just to make profit. I used limited run games, a couple at least, to help build my 3DS collection. I traded them as at a, um, a swap meet to basically build a 3DS collection. You know, I gave away, not gave, I traded, I think, 10 games. Two of them were limited run games and I got back about 15 3DS titles. That was a fair trade to me. Some of those games were like Pokemon Art Academy and like other Pokemon spinoffs that were starting to like steadily go up in value. So I felt like, yeah, we're getting an equal trade here. And I was good with it. And the other one, Celeste, helped grease the wheels for my last trade. Just as I was talking about how we get some money to go pay for our trip and I ended up picking up two more games, which was the Clonoa series, which is an EU exclusive, and then uh, Void, Void something. And yeah, Celeste, helped me get funds for that. Like, I don't well, feel bad, because I held on to Celeste for about 10 months, and then decided to bundle it with other games to trade for, you know, basically what I needed in the future, which was money for a trip, and money to purchase more video games to put in my collection. All this to say that the people who are upset and think I just care about rarity, that's not the case. There's just gonna come a point where you need to sell some stuff, and so you need to know what the value of your collection is, and you need to know that not every game you purchase when you're collecting, you're gonna get a chance to play, so you need to know the value and what it's gonna sell for later. And those are things you need to care about if you're gonna build on a budget. If you have unlimited money, fine. Just buy to your heart's content and then ignore my video. But for me, I'm gonna to have to sell games every once in a while to fund my next one because I'm just not made of money. That was kind of a rambly video. Probably added a few things. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Leave a like, dislike, and we'll catch you next time.